Welcome to Democratically Speaking. My name is Mark Lindy and I am the chairman of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. I am doing this show on my own time on Brockton Community Access as a volunteer. Today in studio I have John Drzinskis. John is from Ward 6. He's running for City Council. Welcome John. Thank you. Thank you for having Thanks me Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Um, you're a new candidate. You're someone that's been involved in Brockton for a long time mm -hmm. but have you haven't run for office before. No, I haven't. Uh, I do a lot of volunteer work in the community already. Okay, I volunteer for several organizations. I'm a member of the Knights of Columbus. Uh, we do a lot of um, good things in the community. Um, we have a direct connection with Main Spring House here in, Bro in, in Brockton. Uh, we do a statewide uh, program called Coats for Kids that provides winter clothing for uh, underprivileged, underprivileged children. Um, I also uh, volunteer at the VA Medical Center. Um, I do volunteer work for uh, the regional Old Colony Hospice. Uh, I volunteer at uh, St. Joseph's Manor Nursing Home, and I'm also on the Board of Trustees there. Uh, I'm a retired person, okay? My entire life I was spent as a retail manager. And uh, what gives me, I think, a distinct advantage over my opponents is that I can have, I, I have the free time to put into this. Uh, one of my opponents, I understand, has a, has a full-time job, and the other one uh, has plans on going on to college next year. He's a recent graduate of Cardinal Spellman. So, um, you know, they have, they have other things in their lives that will take up, uh, take up time. So I, I have a distinct advantage in that, in that I do have the time to put into this. Um, I have, um, as I say, an uh, extensive volunteer uh, career in the community, and I consider Ward 6 Counselor nothing more than uh, an extension of my volunteerism, uh, giving back to the community and serving the people in Ward 6. And what brought you out? You haven't run before. I said you were a new candidate. Mm -hmm. Okay, your name hasn't been on a ballot before. Correct. In Ward 6, it seems like people are on the ballot a lot. We, we, the, the retiring counselor has been there for a while. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is an open seat because Michelle Dubois got elected the state representative. And That's she correct. has chosen not to run again for the Ward 6 council spot. What brought you out this time, John? What brought me out this time? Well, I'm, I'm retired and uh, I love my city. I especially love the neighborhood that I live in. I live in the, uh, the village section of Ward 6. I have my entire life. That's where I grew up in. I, as a matter of fact, I'm st still in the same house that I grew up in. Uh, the house went from uh, my parents when they passed. They went to me and I'm still there. So uh, saying that I have deep roots in the community, I, I, I'm entrenched in the community. I, I, I really know what's going on. And I think this is a way of giving back to the community that uh, I've lived in my entire life. Let me ask you a question about the village, okay? When I was a kid, okay, I'd go to that village for bakery, for all sorts of different things. The, the Lithuanian cafe was safe to go to at that point, mm -hmm. okay? Um, it was the best place in town to go for a beer that was inexpensive and affordable, and you didn't have to worry about whether you got shot or killed. Right, okay? exactly. Um, Living in the village, do you have plans to do anything with the village? Because if you look about, if you look about the city, there's focus now on the downtown more than ever before. There's focus in Campello. You don't hear as much about Montello, and you certainly don't hear about the village. Do you have any plans in that respect? Well, the, the, the village is making a comeback already uh, w without my assistance. Okay, there's more single-family homes being built, which is a good thing. There's less vacant lots. There's uh, less absentee landlords. Um, the the three-decker apartments are being uh, three-decker tenements are being cleaned up, and uh, the village I think is progressing in in the right direction. Uh, you mentioned the um, the bars down the village. There was one problem bar that was recently closed, and it was purchased by a gentleman that already owns a business over in Campello. The Sunset Cafe. Um, he's going. He's going to be the new owner of uh, this bar location, and his plans is to make a family restaurant there. So I'm all in favor of that if it's truly going to be a family restaurant. So the area is already starting to make a comeback. We have a we have a lot more work to do, but um, it's it's getting there. 
Do you have any ideas of your own? I, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I, I, do you have anything, you know, if I were running for that seat, I, mm -hmm. I have certain opinions on what I would try to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, you're a ward councilor, you're one of 11, there are seven city councilors that are wards and then the four at large, so the way I look at it is I have five representatives. I live in Ward 1, so I have my Ward 1 councilor and four more representatives, plus the mayor and then the other people that represent me. But what do you think you can accomplish as a, a specific Ward councilor to a geographical area? Well, we still have a, we still have a problem with some a absentee landlords. Uh, you know, folks that own mostly three-decker apartments, the three-decker uh, tenements that uh, do not live there, do not live in Brockton at all, and are only interested in getting the, uh, the, the rent check each week. And uh, they have to be more careful, uh, more selective of who they rent their apartments out to. They don't want the, uh, the criminal clientele coming into our neighborhood. And uh, they certainly need to keep their apartments, um, you know, the, the, the inside and the outside cleaner. Uh, I have an apartment directly behind my house that has that problem and I've addressed it with the owner and he he has cleaned it up so um, that's that's one thing I would like to see for sure also more single-family homes okay the old location of the Franklin School the Franklin School is now been closed for a while it's been demolished and there are nine house nine single-family homes being built affordable single-family family homes in that location so the appearance of the ward, the appearance of the, my immediate neighborhood, the village, is, is changing and that's something I would encourage in, um, in the future. Now John, you were involved very heavily in the church. Yes. That unfortunately closed. The Archdiocese chose to close the church. Yes, the okay, old St. Casimir's Church. Which the community members bought and paid for, mm -hmm. the Lithuanian community. I covered a couple of events. Uh, Marita Bizenkowska, she used to do a fundraiser every year, I think, mm -hmm. for Lithuanian Children's Relief. I went to high school with her, okay. graduated the same year, and it was hometown. It was hometown based. Now there is a church there. It looks like all the houses of worship in Brockton whether they were at synagogue, it could be a church now, or mm -hmm. something else. Does that bother you? Did, 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 did that hurt the neighborhood or, or, it, or it, anything? It, it, just the opposite, Mark. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that the, the, the exterior, the, the, the facade of the church is still there. Um, the church is bought by a, a Boston-based um, Protestant group called, um, I believe they, uh, they're called uh, the Greater Tabernacle uh, Congregation. Uh, I've actually met the pastor and his wife. They're very nice people. Uh, they gave me a, ch uh, a tour of the inside of the church when they found out who I was, a member of the former parish council there, and they've done a very nice job. So just the opposite of what you said. I'm very happy that the church is still there as a church, as a place of worship. Now, schools. You mentioned the Franklin School, that it was torn down and demolished. My mom taught there. That was one of her schools. I remember Mr. Meacham being over there. There are two schools left in Ward 6, mm -hmm. the Asheville School and the Brookfield School. Yes. Um, city councilors don't deal with school issues per se, other than the school budget when you guys pass it. You always hear this city side, school side stuff. How do you feel about schools in general, and what would you do as a city councilor to support them, or what's your take on the school system? Well, I just posted uh, this morning on, on Facebook um, uh, the fact that I attended a, a forum held last week by um, Superintendent Kathleen Smith and other administrators of the school department. Um, it was meant for candidates and current city officials um, uh, to explain what the challenges the school department faces. It was very informative, very educational. I think uh, the counselors should take a more active role in helping the school committee members and mm -hmm. the school department in um, in, uh, in increasing increasing the uh, our edu ed educational opportunities for our children, because our children truly are our future. Uh, it's one of my top priorities. I, I plan on working very closely with whoever. Our school committee person in Ward Six uh, happens to be, and um, I think it's I think it's a top priority. I think that's already decided because she doesn't have an opponent unless a, a swell of write-in votes come in. Right. It looks like it's um, uh, Joyce, Joyce Asak, Asak. Joyce Asak, which Correct. happens to be City Councilor Shirley Asak's sister. Right. Great family that's been very involved in in Brockton, but he, he so you know when you get that school budget, the school budget is 
is big. So it's a big budget. Most of the money comes from the state. Right. There's a, a city share in, in terms of that. Um, have you been, uh, I mean, last year I had the ability to go on a tour as an elected official being on the Southeastern School Committee and look at the condition of the schools. Have you been, I mean, you vote at Asheville? Uh, uh, Brookfield. Brookfield. Okay, Brookfield, I Brookfield vote. has yes. three of the four precincts that vote there. Yes. Have you seen the conditions of the schools? Do you, do, do you have any thoughts on that? I haven't been in the schools myself personally. Okay, I don't have any children, so I, I haven't I haven't been in. The, but I, I plan on being involved uh, much more now that uh, that I'm running for this position. As I said, uh, we need to we need to work together with the school committee and the school department to improve the quality of education for our children and the infra infrastructure. One thing that came out of the meeting. Um, with Kathleen Smith was that um, the, you mentioned the Brookfield and the Ashfield. They are earmarked for uh, new ropes and new boilers by uh, both schools by, by November of this year. So that's, that's a great improvement on the uh, infrastructure end of it. And one thing I noticed when I was running for office, how far the folks have to walk into the Brookfield school to vote. That's a long hike. It is for senior citizens, especially to, for senior to, citizens to, to go yes. down there. Yeah. Um, I noticed with some of the elections now, with the special election going on for the state senate, that like over in Easton, which only has two precincts that vote, normally in Easton they vote at Oliver Ames High School. They're voting in town hall. Mm -hmm. Anything that you think could be done? You're, you're a city councilor. You get to look at the elections commission budget. You, you know that's over. The, I mean, the mayor creates the budget and the council can only cut the budget. Right. Do you see any different priorities from your point of view? You are not a career politician. You're not, not somebody that's been involved in city government before. Do you see it any differently from people that are very involved and very active in politics in Brockton? Well, as you mentioned, I'm not a career politician, and, and I think I think that in some respects it's a good thing. Um, I mentioned that to the people that um, I I met doing neighborhood canvassing, and they uh, they uh, they consider that a good thing for, for the for the most part. I have no connections, uh, no special interest groups pulling my strings or any of that kind of nonsense. So I come in there with a fresh perspective. I'm open to new ideas. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always, I'm always, uh, uh, you know, my, uh, my, my ears are always open to new ideas uh, from people in the ward, and um, you know, if, if it's if it's a good idea, I may not agree with it, but if the majority wants that, wants that, then that's what we'll go by. Now, so far, so good. I, I'm a candidate when I run that believes in clean elections. It looks like there are three. Good candidates running in Ward Six. Mm -hmm. So far, everybody's getting along. We haven't had any debates or anything like that. Tell us a little bit more of the John Drzinska story. What what makes you different or set yourself apart from your two opponents that you're running against? With and, and nobody's been negative in Ward Six, so no, I'm they have. Everybody will stay that way. As a matter of fact, I grew up with Steve Foote, so mm -hmm. uh, he's a little bit younger than me. Okay, but. Uh, you know, we played in the same street hockey league together. Um, that's that's the connection with Steve. Um, but uh, w what separates me, I think, is is number one. I can I have the the time to put into this. And, uh, as I mentioned, the the, the other city councilors uh, they all have to have full time jobs. I'm lucky enough to be a retired person. I have the the, the time to put into this. 100 percent of my free time. Uh, I, I really care and love about the. Uh, I, I, I care and love the community that I'm in. Um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a hard worker. I certainly will listen to different opinions, and uh, that I think that's what separates me from from everybody, everybody else. You know. So issues. Let's talk issues. There are certainly. different issues. The ones you hear about all the time. We'll go through those, certainly. and then I'll ask you a little bit about your issues. I just got the 15-minute sign, so we're halfway through. Okay. I know uh, you haven't been on TV a lot, so nope. it's always intimidating the first time going on TV. I mean, I've been doing TV forever, but believe it or not, when I first got on TV, I was nervous. I teach public speaking now, so it's a little bit easier. I'm a little bit okay. nervous, but that's well, okay. Well, everybody's yeah. friends. So yeah. here's my question. You, you, you keep hearing about all the major issues. Mm -hmm. um, your current city councilor, Michelle Dubois, yes. has been one of the adamant voices against 
the power plant in mm -hmm. the city of Brockton. She was someone that came into office and ran, uh, helped the people, residents against the trash transfer station, I think before she was a counselor. She yeah. got involved in that. That was many years ago, yeah. But How yes. do you see, what's your, can, can you give me a definitive on the power plant, whether you're for it or against it or some variation? Oh, certainly. On the power plant, I'm against it. And I'm against it for several different reasons. Number one, the environmental reasons. Um, you know, I've, everything I've seen says this is not good for the environment. My girlfriend of many years has, has asthma. She's a severe asthmatic. And I don't see her situation improving with a power plant with this, this, this monster spewing all this particulate matter in the air. Uh, the other thing is, if the power plant is built, what guarantee do we have that the benefits of the power plant, the energy created by the power plant, will go to Brockton residents. I haven't heard any kind of guarantees. Um, you know, the power plant's built. They have the choice to outsource that, that energy to anywhere they want. So on those two grounds, I'm, I'm opposed to the power plant and have been and will be. Now, the power plant, the mayor reached a settlement with the power plant folks, right. okay? Yeah. I've been asking this question to councillors at large, <coughs> candidates and council candidates. We have a form of government, a plan B form of government. S it, on paper, it's strong council, weak mayor. I personally hate that terminology because you have a chief executive, you have a legislative body, and then if nobody gets along, you have a court, you have a judiciary. Do you think the mayor had the authority to do that? And if you're a city councillor, if you were sitting in that chair, I know there's a big lawsuit going on. You're not named in the lawsuit because you weren't an official and you weren't against it. Some of the people are individually named. What would you do as a city councilor if, if, if the mayor signed an agreement? I, I think it's still in formation. I, I, I think the council have met behind yeah. closed doors yeah. in executive session because it, it, it involves litigation and that's grounds for executive session. What's your take on it? Well. It's, it's an expensive lawsuit, but can we really put a price tag on the value of life, the quality of life in Brockton? I don't think we can. I don't, th you know, it's costing, you know, it's costing the city millions of dollars and it probably will in the, in the future, but I don't think you could put, uh, put a price tag on, on, on the, the quality of life in Brockton. Uh, and the power plant, if it's built, and it's operating will definitely uh, negatively affect the quality of life in our city. Um, does the mayor have the, uh, the authority to do that? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, uh, you know, I, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you what the, uh, you know, the legal ramifications of that would be. Um, without the, the mayor consulting the council before, settling, uh, before signing that agreement, uh, I, would be, I would be upset. Okay. as the council is. Yeah. Now, desal is another thing. Mm -hmm. um, this city has been paying a lot of money for a mm -hmm. long time under an agreement for the desal plant to use the water that basically we don't use. Right. We only used it when we just had a recent crisis. Right. The mayor has a proposal to buy it. Instead of leasing it, instead of making all those payments every year, um, the price, there's a debate going on about the price whether it's a fair price, whether it's overinflated, what the deal is. What's your opinion? The figure on the, on the price that I've heard was $88 million. Okay. Now, if the city can find $88 million to buy a desal plant, an antiquated desal plant that we don't want or we don't need, then that money, in my opinion, could be put into other things like education, you mentioned earlier. Okay. Um, I think it's a bad idea to buy the, uh, the to buy the desal plant. I, I I really do. We don't we don't want it. We don't need it. Um, you know we are paying a usage fee each year. It was a very bad contract. Nothing against the Carpenter administration. This one goes back many many years before his administration. But there should be a a legal way to get out of the contract because they. Aquaria has basically reneged on their contract, and we need to we need to void that contract. Okay, um, there's all sorts of issues going on. Sometimes it's hard to forget all of them. One thing nobody can forget about is crime, okay? You talk about budgets, you talk about priorities. 
um, it's a big issue. It's the issue that Mayor Carpenter ran on two years ago, mm -hmm. and it's still an issue. Okay, we're a city. Brockton's a city. We're not a town. We're not East End. Exactly. We're not Avon. Um, Ward 6 mm -hmm. seems to be a little more immune from all of that stuff. There, there's, there's been issues in the village with the bars like you alluded to. Right. Um, what's your take on public safety? What do we need to do? What do we need to do differently? Do we have the resources? Do we have the manpower? What, what's your opinion? We have to, uh, as a city, we have to find creative ways to bring in uh, people, fr what I call people-friendly businesses. And, and uh, I'm not referring to the power plant as people-friendly or the Qu Aquaria plant. And, and raise revenue to get more you know, it's 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 the domino theory. If you have if you have good businesses that are paying uh, their fair share in taxes, you can raise revenue to get more boots on the ground for the police. And the fire department, from what I understand, has been trying to get a ladder truck, a new ladder truck, for years. So we need we need to find uh, creative ways to raise more revenue for both for our first responders, for the police and the fire department. Now, Ward Six has its own fire station. Yes. I know when I had Steve Foote in here on the same show, he talked about his absolute priority to keep the Carry Hill fire station. As is mine. Uh, we, 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 need, we, need, we need that fire station. It services. It, uh, when, uh, I had a minor stroke about five years ago. They, they were the first responders to my house. Um, you know, uh, when my parents were alive, um, they had medical issues, and they were the first people there. We d we we definitely need that fire station in our area, and I will fight to keep that fire station open. There's been rumors that it, it might close altogether, rumors that it might become a part-time station. Um, that is no good. We need a we need a full-time uh, staff there. Ambulance contract was changed. Thirty-two years with uh, AMR. Now we're into Brewster. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts or opinions on that? I really don't know enough about that. Okay, that's the, that's that's interesting. I mean, there's been allegations, of course, um, that you've probably heard that 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 Brewster um, contributed to the mayor's campaign, and you know, th these are all. It's it's actually like you said, it's actually in litigation. I'd rather not comment on that because it's in, you know the, there's a federal grand jury out on that, and I really don't know an, enough about it to comment intelligently. Okay, I think I got about a few minutes ago. I got a ten-minute queue, so we're probably okay. at about eight. I want to make sure we talk about your issues, okay. specific issues, things that you've brought to the forefront, either on your literature or on your website or on your Facebook, whatever. And I want to make sure you have time to let people know how to get in touch with you, sure. what your website is, what your phone number is. Tell me your issues, John. Well, The way the way to win an election, as far as I'm concerned, you can have as much literature as you want, as many lawn signs, as many palm cards, as many bumper stickers. Okay, but but the way to win an election is to reach out to the voters and find out what their concerns and questions are. So um, I have done that, and uh, currently I'm in the process of going door to door, neighborhood canvassing, and I've, I'm proud to say I've knocked on over 1,000 doors in my wards. And by knocking on those doors and meeting people, I found out what their issues are. And by far, the number one issue in the ward, uh, especially in the Ash both the Ashfield and the Brookfield areas, is the condition of the roads. And uh, they truly are bad. Some of the roads in there, um, you know, Lisa and Tina up on uh, up in Bro Brookfield, just to mention too, the roads are all chopped up. Uh, the neighbors have said they have complained. They've tried calling city officials. Nothing's been done. They've tried calling elected officials. Nothing's been done. So I think I think uh, I want to make that my my number one priority is the ro the, the infra infrastructure, um, specifically th the roads in the ward. Okay, we have a new DPW commissioner here mm -hmm. in 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 Brockton, and he seems to be like a he seems to be a good man and wants to do the right thing. So I'd like to meet with him one-on-one -on -one and see what, what can be done about the situation for the residents. Um, dri driving is bad enough, but I can tell you walking, I've twisted my ankles a couple of times just walking those roads. So they are bad. Yeah. That's, one, that's one of my issues. Well, I've been planning the breakfast for the Democratic City Committee, and I've been going to Larry Curtis's house. Mm -hmm. Larry's on Dixon. 
Yes. And going in off of, I think it's North Cary, off the side streets into his street, there's issues with right. the roads. I, I live in Ward 1. It wasn't until a couple of years ago that I had my street done, and the street next to me was done sooner. It seems like there's only three or four streets a year that get done per ward because the money that comes from the state kind of dries up. But, yeah. uh, you know, when I went out, I wasn't even running for city office. I was running for state rep and for register of probate. And when I went door to door, I had people talking to me about streets, so yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Um, how do you prioritize things? So we, I got the five minute cue, so I want to make sure for sure we, we give you time to promote yourself and mm -hmm. tell people why they should vote to you, for you. But what are your, how do you prioritize as a city council? You've got a lot of competing interests, okay? How do you decide, like, I'll put in the pitch right now. I'm the chair of the library board. Where do libraries fit in? Where does the council on aging fit in? Where do veterans fit in? How do you make those decisions? You're the new kid on the block. How do you decide what's more important? Well, it, it, I think how you decide is what, what impacts the community the most, okay? Uh, libraries are important, okay? Uh, education is important. Uh, it, it depends on which issue impacts the, the um, larger amount of the population, to me. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how I would prioritize. Do you have, I mean, you talked about streets, you talked about public safety. Okay, yes. you have to pick. You've got a limited budget. I'm going to put you in the hot seat. What's the number one? Okay, they tell me three minutes, so you get about a minute to answer that. Okay, um, I, I would say I would say the streets. That's the that's the immediate concern of people. Um, you know, I, 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 a ward councilor also is responsible for the entire city, but immediately responsible for the people in his ward, and that has been the major complaint of people that I've spoken to. So I would say the streets would be uh, the the streets and the condition of the streets would be my number one priority. Okay, I'm going to give you two minutes. Mm -hmm. Wrap into your two minutes, and you can address the viewers, the voters. Tell them why they should vote to you, how they get in touch with you, mm -hmm. uh, website, phone number, things like that. Okay, my name is John Rosinskis, as Mark said. Um, I'm running for Ward 6 Councilor. Um, new to politics, new to local politics. This is the first time I'm running. I am um, not a career politician. I don't come with any special interests, pulling my strings, or any of that kind of nonsense. I bring a fresh and new perspective to the City Council. I hope you consider me. Uh, you can get in touch with me uh, at my home number, 508-586-8599. Or if you prefer uh, sending me an email, my email address is johnd27 at verizon.net. Uh, I do not have a website, but I, I do have a Facebook page. You can find all the information uh, about me on, on my Facebook page. And I respectfully ask for your vote on September 20, 22nd. I'll vote for the guy with the unusual last name, and I'm number three on the ballot for Councilor for Ward 6. Well, thank you, John. Uh, what do I have left for time? Just. Uh I got a minute. Okay. okay. So, first of all, thank you for coming on to talk about and promote your candidacy. I believe in educating all the voters so they can take a look. Um, and uh, I'll thank you for putting your name on the ballot. I think anybody, having run myself, anyone that puts the name on the ballot should be commended. Okay. If, if I have 30 seconds, I also like to congratulate you and your chairmanship of the Democratic City Committee. Well, I'm going to try. We're going to okay. give it a good go. Okay. And we'll get all the candidates on on the, 20, uh, the 20th super. at the breakfast. That's super. Um, you're watching Democratically Speaking. Mark Linda, your host, uh, chairman of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. I just want everybody to remember that on September 22nd, it's your duty, it's your right to vote. So make sure you exercise your right that people fought for and died for. Thank you very much for joining us.